A Florida man exposed himself to some ladies and drank their apple juice. A Florida woman with a pitchfork and a whip was arrested outside a Publix. A Florida man woke up with a headache and found a bullet lodged in his head. Frozen Stiffs is an ice cream hearse you might find on the streets of Florida. And a Florida man calls 911 to report his own kidnapping because he's bored. These are the weird stories for Friday on Weird AF News. They are all from the state of Florida, per usual. Because on Friday, we do only weird news from the state of Florida. It's Florida Friday on Weird AF News. Thanks for joining me. Let's lead you into the weekend with some weird Florida stories, shall we? A Florida man walked into an elderly woman's home. But that's not all. A Florida man has been arrested because he walked into the home of an 89-year-old Florida woman. He uh, exposed himself to the elderly woman and her caregiver, and he also helped himself to some apple juice. That's right. Broke into a home, took out his genitals, and had apple juice. The Haines City police officers had to be called to the home on Monday when a man later identified as Keandra Griner, age 25, of Haines City, Florida, entered a home. He exposed himself to the 89-year-old homeowner and her 32-year-old caregiver. Shocking. Officers were told by the elderly homeowner that Griner entered the house and attempted to pull down the pants of her female caregiver. He tried to pants the caregiver as well, not just himself. When Griner was unable to remove the pants of the female caregiver, he approached the homeowner and did not attempt to remove her pants, decided to display his genitals in front of her (laughs) instead. When the city detective arrived on the scene, the victims said the man entered the residence through an unlocked rear door. Well, how is your door unlocked in Florida? Are you guys okay? I'm not trying to blick them, blick them vame here. Blick them vame. <laughs> Victim blame here. But come on, you live in Florida. Nothing should be unlocked in Florida. Okay, so he entered through an unlocked rear door, went to the refrigerator, grabbed an apple juice. I like to imagine in my mind it's a little box apple juice. He walked into a bedroom with his pants down. His genitals were in his hand. The woman pushed Griner out of the way, went into her living room where Griner continued continued to display the genitals. Yeah, because once a Florida man has his genitals out, there's not much that's going to make him put it away. You got to tase him. You, You tase him, he may put it away. Sick your pet alligator on him, maybe he'll put it away. He may try to make love to the alligator. I mean, you can't put that past a Florida man either. The woman told Griner to leave. He initially refused, but eventually left through the back door. Wow, they're very lucky that this is all that happened. The elderly woman claims she was never touched by Griner and that he did not have permission to be in her residence. (laughs) Yeah, that goes without saying. Uh, Ma'am, that... That uh, gentleman that entered your home and displayed his genitalia and drank some of your delicious apple juice, did he have permission to be inside your residence? (laughs) No, he didn't. He had no, he didn't have a note on him of any sort. (laughs) Well, armed with the victim's description of the suspect and his genitalia, officers were able to locate Griner at the (laughs) 7-Eleven. They always end up at the (laughs) 7-Eleven. It's like... Oh, man. It is the number one meetup spot for people involved in all sorts of debauchery, the 7-Eleven. I have one down the street from me. That's where the weirdos are. (laughs) They're hanging out at the 7-Eleven. If a 7-Eleven opens in your town, you need to move far away. I've learned this. Okay. Uh, This guy, Griner's charged with uh, burglary and two counts of exposure of sexual organs. I like to imagine he was sipping slowly on the juice box while his sexual organs were on display. Just, you going to touch it or you're just going to look at it? Oh, this is good juice, by the way. This is uh, sugar-free. I uh, like my apple juice with no sugar added. <laughs> trying, to, trying to stay slim. A Florida woman was arrested outside a store with a pitchfork and a whip. Lake County, Florida, a Florida woman is accused of waving a pitchfork and a black whip in front of a Publix store. 
She was arrested on Tuesday. The Publix store manager told the police that Lisa Ann Sloan, our Florida woman, star of the story, age 56, was trying to sell teddy bears behind the store earlier that day. When the manager of the Publix approached Sloan, he asked if she could please sell her wares elsewhere and not on store property. That's when the Florida woman became extremely irate and took out a pitchfork. Okay, it's turning into a horror movie already. She began waving the pitchfork around. The manager was scared. He witnessed Sloan stab a minivan with the pitchfork. She stabbed a nearby minivan. <laughs> Lucky it wasn't his face. <laughs> She stabbed a van. What a strange maneuver. Did she think it was his van? Well, it wasn't. The manager says the owner of the van actually did not want police involvement. Drove off, said he would fix the damage on his own. (laughs) Didn't want to get involved in Florida shenanigans, and I don't blame him. The police were called to the scene, and by then Sloan had a second weapon on her, a whip. So now she's wielding a pitchfork and a whip. Some John Wayne activity here. (laughs) Some old school implements of war. (laughs) She thinks she's in a Western. (laughs) All right, so the troopers ordered Sloan to put down the weapons and to stop. She refused and tried to run away. Eventually, they caught her and disarmed her and put her in the back of a patrol car, but that's when she unbuckled her seatbelt and began kicking at the patrol car window. According to the report, Sloan appeared to be highly intoxicated on a stimulant drug, but did not have an odor of alcohol. Uh, According to the police report, when they asked Sloan why she had so many marks and bruises on her, she replied, I feel no pain anymore. God is in control. God is in control. Sloan, of course, is held in the Orange Lake County Jail currently and is being charged with aggravated assault. No word on what happened to the teddy bears. A Florida man woke up with a headache and found a bullet lodged in his head. Port St. Lucie. A woman was arrested Tuesday after her husband woke up in the middle of the night with a terrible headache and later learned it was from a bullet. A bullet in his head. A bullet in the head! (laughs) A headache. How you mistake a bullet in your head for a little headache? How did you not wake up when the gun was fired? Is what I want to know. This is a very deep sleeper, this guy. I wish I could sleep this good. (laughs) Not even hear a gunshot. Not even feel it enter my skull. (laughs) This is... I'm going to guess he's on some chemicals, really. uh, He wasn't sleeping more, more so than he was passed out from alcohol. The Florida sheriff's deputies initially thought that Michael Eugene Moylan had been hit by a stray bullet. But then they later realized the couple's story did not quite match up. Let's find out how it went down. Michael Moylan, age 45, woke up at 4.30 a.m. and thought he had suffered an aneurysm or that his wife had elbowed him in his sleep. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, you got to be pretty messed up to confuse an elbow with a bullet to the head, but okay. His wife uh, agreed to drive him to the hospital, where doctors said a bullet had lodged behind his right ear. (laughs) Come on, I mean, wasn't there a shit ton of blood on the mattress? How do you know? (laughs) You think think she elbowed you in the head? All this blood, you think it's just an elbow from when she was tossing and a-turning? Authorities had to obtain a search warrant for the couple's home because, obviously, shenanigans were afoot. And they later arrested his wife, April. Uh, The evidence indicated that Michael had been shot at close range by someone in the house. It was clear there were inconsistencies with the couple's story. April Moylan eventually told the authorities she accidentally shot her husband. Uh, I don't know how you accidentally shoot your husband sleeping in bed. Uh, But all right, maybe she's in her bed playing with the gun, trying to load it. I don't know if it was a new gun. Just just checking it out. She just couldn't sleep. She got very excited about the new gun. Couldn't wait to use it, you know. We have a quote from the sheriff here. Well, I thought to myself, how can this guy be shot, not knowing that he was shot, then walk into a hospital room? It was just amazing to all of us. Amazing? (laughs) Have you heard of chemicals, sir? (sighs) I find it hard to believe that any police in Florida are amazed at this point. 
Our Florida man, Michael Moylan, did not undergo any surgery, but was transferred to a trauma facility. His condition is not known. Let's hope he recovers quickly so that he can get back to that wonderful Florida relationship. Although at this point, I think they should uh, maybe sleep in separate bedrooms. I don't know. Just a just an idea. Frozen stiffs. The first ever ice cream hearse haunts Florida streets. This is a lovely summertime story. Tampa Bay. An ice cream hearse is apparently haunting the streets of a Florida city. Yes, indeed. And it couldn't be at a better time. It's extremely hot everywhere right now. We all want ice cream. This is a Tampa Bay business called Frozen Stiffs Ice Cream Hearse. What a great name, right? Frozen Stiffs. Hilarious. The ice cream hearse is serving families ice cold treats straight out of a casket freezer and apparently to the tune of the Adams Family theme song. You guys know that one, right? It goes da-na-na-na, da-na-na-na. They're kooky and they're zany, they're ugly and they're something. I don't know how it goes, but something like that. This company, very creative. Um, And anytime somebody in Florida is doing something creative and uh, fun, and safe, I have to applaud it. The company took a 1967 hearse and converted it into a novelty ice cream truck, and they hand ice cream to customers through the passenger side service window. There is a video of this Frozen Stiffs ice cream hearse. It's fantastic. I'll post a link in the Patreon, uh, or just Google it. You should see it. Uh, The website says the Frozen Stiffs ice cream hearse is now haunting Hillsborough, Pinellas, and Pasco counties. Pinellas County! Wow, you're very daring to haunt Pinellas County, my friend. I mean, it's just a matter of time before they try to hearse jack your ice cream hearse. It's Pinellas County, guys. You know how it goes on down there. All right, it says here on the website their ice cream treats are 3 to $5 each. You can rent the hearse for a private event. It's $150 for two hours. Super cool, man. I would totally hire a hearse like this for an event because it's weird and awesome. Um, they also have an Instagram page. It's just uh, at Frozen Stiffs. Oh, this is unbelievable. I love stuff like this. Very novel idea. And I sure love ice cream. So if you happen to be in the area, please hit up Frozen Stiff's Ice Cream Hearse. Take a selfie and send it to me. I'd love to see it. Uh, and my birthday's in April, guys. If you want to send it over to my house, that'll give them some time to get, get all the way over here. I just love stuff like this. And it's nice to see in Florida they're doing some things other than taking out their genitalia this summer. A Florida man called 911 and reported his own kidnapping. Uh, Living in Florida, there are some nice beaches and parks, a plethora of historical sites, in case you didn't know. They got some amusement parks, water adventures, even wildlife. There are plenty of things to do, but one Florida man apparently became very bored with the many activities offered in the Sunshine State and decided some further excitement was needed. What better way to do that than to fake your own kidnapping? A Marion County Sheriff's Office deputy responded to a report of a kidnapping. The 911 caller stated that Austin Busick had just been kidnapped. Austin was forced into a car against his will and driven away, according to the call. A short time later, a second 911 call came in stating the suspect's vehicle was southbound on uh, Highway 441. An investigation revealed that the 911 caller was in fact Austin Busick, our Florida man, bored, star of this story. Turns out the whole incident was made up. Deputies contacted Austin, who stated that he did not know why, but he made up this false kidnapping report. He was arrested and transported to the Marion County Jail, and that's the end of the story. That's all we got, guys. We got to fill in the blanks ourselves. Let's get creative. I'm going to say he did it for the TikTok video, right? This is what they're doing now. The kidnap yourself challenge on TikTok. This seems to be a thing, I would imagine. (laughs) Did it for the gram. People just really want to go viral on social media that they'll call 911 and report their own kidnapping, their own murder, whatever it might be. (laughs) These kids these days, I tell you. The other reason you would fake your own kidnapping is if you were trying to you know, get your rich parents to send you some ransom money. We've seen that before in films. The other reason just could be boredom. They could be right in this article. Perhaps this Florida man was just straight up bored, and it's just not that exciting anymore to go get yourself some alligator jerky and play disc golf. You're like, you know what? I need to get the police involved in my life. 
That'll give me a spark. After all, it is the weekend. <laughs> Let's have some fun. <laughs> Yay! You like podcasts? You're listening to my podcast. Maybe you thought to yourself, I'd like to make a podcast. Too difficult. No, not with Anchor. Anchor has free creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. They have advertising integration, so you can even make a little money off your podcast. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your creation. Good luck with your life, man. A bullet in the head! A bullet in the head! You guys know that one? I know you know it. Of course you know it. You're cool. I hope you enjoyed that Florida Friday uh, episode. Thanks to everyone who sent me Florida articles, uh, such as Carrie from Portland, who sent me a Florida story. Uh, And then she wrote, I love you, and I love the show, Jonesy. Carrie from Portland. Shout out to Carrie. Yeah, I'm pretty big up in Portland, apparently. Uh, I also got a... Nice Instagram message from CJ, also known as Sweet Caroline. She wrote, hey, Jonesy, hope your health is good. You're staying cool. Uh, My best buddy is going to court tomorrow morning, and we believe that he's going to jail. He's a good guy. Uh, But, of course, it was bound to happen sooner or later. I wish that you could be so kind, Jonesy, and give a shout-out for me. His name is Stephen Earle, and I want to tell him that he is always on my mind, and I wish him a happy early birthday from his Sweet Caroline, CJ. And she wrote, thank you again, Jonesy, for all that you do. Well, all right. Well, we wish uh, Stephen, who uh, I learned through further message- messaging with Caroline, and Stephen's a fan of the show as well. So we wish Stephen good luck. And um, I'm not sure if you can listen to Weird AF News in jail, but maybe. Stephen, let me know if, it, if you guys get that, get that in jail. Tell some people about the show in there. And I wish you the best, my friend. Now, if you guys would ever like to reach out to me, my Instagram is at funnyjones, and my email is funnyjones at gmail.com. You can even call the show. Did you know about that? That sort of communication? Yeah. We're very high tech over here in the closet. The number six four six four five zero twenty twelve. 646-450-2012. Please keep it clean for the kitties. Appreciate that. Now, if you'd like to uh, support Weird AF News on a monetary level, you can donate On weirdafnews.com, you can buy me a coffee. Or you can join the Patreon at weirdafnews.com as well. Just click on that link or go to uh, patreon.com slash weirdafnews or download the Patreon app and um, become a patron of the arts. (laughs) Like this is art. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, yeah, this is art. All right. Okay. Have a great weekend. Hey, Jones, it's Michael calling from Iowa City. And I uh, hope all the weirdos out there are keeping cool. I know it's hot everywhere. So I just wanted to tell everyone to make sure that they're staying safe, keeping cool, drinking plenty of water, and uh, watching out for heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Uh, the easiest thing to do uh, from a biological sense and the quickest trick is to just take your weight and cut it in half and drink that many ounces of water a day. So let's just say you weigh 150 pounds, cut that in half and make sure you're drinking a minimum of 75 ounces of water a day. So um, that's just an example. So remember everyone, take your weight, cut it in half and drink that many ounces of water per day at a minimum. All right, quick trip. Quick trip, quick tip for everyone there. Uh, just concerned that with this horrible heat across the world that uh, everyone stay safe and take care of themselves, try to keep cool. I know the power grids are challenged in some places, so if you turn your air conditioning off during the hardest, hottest part of the day to just run some fans inside the house instead, and that will be enough to, to keep you cool and keep you safe, keep the temperatures down in the house. You can back the air conditioning down about four degrees, and that'll save you on your uh, electrical costs during the day. And um, you can still stay cool enough inside as long as you keep the house closed up, keep the curtains closed, and some practical tips there. All right, everyone, stay safe. Jonesy, you too. Take it easy in that hot closet, and uh, good luck with your life, man.
Hello, it's Kirsty. I just heard your story about the redheads. I haven't been to the cinema, but I am a redhead and it's actually 104 degrees Fahrenheit here today. So, yeah, it's dying a little bit, but I'll live. I've spent a year in Australia, so I've had a bit of practice at least. Um, yeah, uh, redhead is an all right term. Better than ginger. That, that's the offensive one, I think. So, yeah, we'll let you off. Alexa, hang up.